This is Better Business Coach, session number 16. This is the Better Business Coach Podcast, your source for critical sales training, proven education, and actionable worksheets, all downloadable for immediate use. We work hard so you don't have to. Now your host, the rapid growth guy himself, Matthew Pollard. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Better Business Coach. My name is Matthew Pollard, and as always, I am your rapid growth guy. Again, I have with me Dev Singh, and this is part two of him giving a wealth of knowledge to you on packaging, pricing, and creating a unified message on how to speak to your customers. He's a renowned business strategist, executive coach, and entrepreneur. And look, a lot of you guys have come straight from the last session, so I'm going to move straight back into the interview. So Dev, obviously we just spent a lot of time talking about unified message and making sure that all of the artifacts around what you do and your past experience matches that to ensure that you're preaching exactly what value you're going to offer. However, we also wanted to talk about packaging and pricing because I know these are murky waters for a lot of people. In session 14, we discussed the importance of having a package and I just wanted to see what advice you feel is vitally important for business coaches in making this decision. Yeah, look, I have two pieces of advice that I'd love to talk about, which I think are going to be super, super valuable to uh, coaches listening to this. There are two fundamental mistakes that I've seen coaches make. Uh, One is a little bit more detailed than the other. So I'll start with the simpler one. The simpler one is that coaches will charge per hour because they believe that or they've been conditioned to believe that that's what people in positions of uh, therapeutic practice or advisory um, roles do. They, they, They basically have billing, billable hours. Right, it's this concept that gets proliferated in pop uh, pop culture, uh, in media. You watch uh, shows about management consultants. So, on the business side of thing, business coaches, that's what they'll believe. If you're in the life coach or um, other personal development type coaching work, then you'll um, you, you'll believe basically how therapists operate. The issue with that is is that uh, people, when when basically people are watching a clock, um, and they're being charged by the clock, their attention is diverted. The advantage of putting a package together, like you're suggesting, Matthew, or even um, even as simple as charging uh, per month, uh, which I, which I believe is not as optimal necessarily as having a package, but it's a step above from charging per hour, um, is that the, the 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 pricing is very much um, a a value exchange that's articulated from the get go of the relationship. So. I used to I used to start off charging per hour because I had a um, you know kind of a job uh, mentality, uh, which is fine. You know I, I made a little bit of money. I didn't make as much money as as I did later when I switched over to uh, charging per month. Then what I did, which I was taught by um, a lot of my mentors and coaches, uh, particularly in the seminar world, was that the default is to charge per month. So have a monthly fee that you charge for coaching and consulting and. These are the, this is the basically have a consistent value proposition, your message, and say, okay, this is it, and I'm going to charge you know fifteen hundred, two thousand, five thousand dollars a month, whatever the case may be. Um, at the moment, I charge between uh, twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars a month, um, based on the nature and, and scope of the work, and that's just my retainer. However, what I found over time is that the kind of clients that I wanted to work with were people who were very very committed to their business were not price sensitive, they were price conscious. The difference between that is that they're very sensible about how much of a bang they're going to get for their buck, but they're not necessarily looking for the cheapest option. In my opinion, that's the best kind of customer and client that you can find. The reason is, is that when you start engaging with them, they're going to be very thorough to make sure that they're dealing with you in a way that's going to get them results, which I find is great because it proves that um, that the work that you're it, it almost holds you accountable to yourself to make sure that you're delivering the best possible result um, in a way that the customer and client doesn't have to chase you up, uh, which I think is very helpful as a coach. The other thing it does is that once that engagement starts, the dollar sign is moved away from your face because the worst thing that you could possibly have is sitting across the table or uh, sitting across Skype working with a client and then looking at your face and there's this kind of semi-transparent dollar sign on your face as well where the person has you know a quarter of their eye staring at the clock saying that 
I'm getting charged for every minute that this person is talking to me. <laughs> exactly. It happens. It, it does happen. People think that's a ridiculous exaggeration or it's a caricature of what happens, but it does. The scariest yep. thing in the world, and this has happened to me even when I was starting, was somebody saying to you, look, I appreciate all the advice, but this is now costing me a fortune. So I'm going to work on what you've currently said before I move on. Whereas a package, they're happy for you to continue talking, which might be the most important and vital part for them to perceive the value in what you've done for the extra 15 minutes because it's not charge per hour. Exactly right. Exactly right. So um, what I was going to say as well is that I kind of took it to the next level um, over the years. I, I evolved my approach to this. And now what I do is that I do charge a monthly rate as well. However, I make sure that when I'm drafting a proposal, if it's to a company or I'm talking about what the proposal is, the proposition is if it's to a smaller business who are, who are not necessarily interested in a, a formal proposal, um, I, I talk about very specific objectives and outcomes that are going to get them meaningful and measurable results. So I run a branding and marketing digital agency. It's a, uh, we do strategy and execution, and we have a very big commitment to making sure that strategy and execution is delivered on time and on budget. And we work with clients all around the world. And when we do, um, particularly businesses, in helping them with their strategies and then also executing on those strategies, uh, when, when I put a proposal together, whether, whether it's documented or verbal, um, I talk about this a lot, meaningful and measurable results. And I say that my mission basically is that at the end of our three-month engagement or six-month engagement, I want to be able to look back. I want you to be able to look back and say that as a result of working with Sketchpad Ideas, you actually had this result that was meaningful and it was measurable by these standards. Um, if If a client can do that for you and if you can help a client get to a point where they can look back and say that, you know, they really got meaningful and measurable results um, working with you, they'll stay with you for life. Because that return on investment is always going to keep proving itself. And essentially, the work that you're doing together, the relationship that you have, that engagement, it's going to pay for their investment automatically. And they will see that. If, um, as a lot of coaches get stuck into um, this this fear, and and I know a lot of people don't want to admit this, but it's true. And it's true largely because there's a lot of proliferation of um, of seminar junkies that get taught this way of doing business, that in a very unconscious, subtle way, they feel that they need to string the client along until they've built enough rapport and engagement that the client doesn't want to let them go. And the focus is not actually on the results. It's on purely just the feel-good nature of the coaching relationship. It doesn't last. And the reason is, is because it might last for a little while, but the client eventually has a business to go back to. They have results that they need to produce. They have a family to feed. Um, they have bills to pay. They will realize that whatever commitment you've made to them, whether you're a business coach or a relationship coach or a health coach, if they're not seeing the results, they're going to stop working with you. And you know what? They'll probably say, you know what? I think we should be friends. And it's almost like as a coach, you get friend zoned. Just like um, if you're a guy and, you know, a girl sort of uh, uh, it goes on a couple of dates with you and then says, oh, you know what, I think we should just be friends. Um, that can happen to you as a coach as well. And the reason it happens is because you're not showing up as the coach. You're just showing you're not showing up really as a professional, as a service delivery um, guy who's, who's bringing real value on the table, which in my personal opinion and my values, it is meaningful and measurable results. So that's one thing I'd be very conscious of. Uh, would you agree with that, Matthew? Uh, yeah, point. definitely. One of the things that I love having people like yourself, Dev, on the show for is that you've been through this. You've probably made these mistakes yourself. As you said, you developed over time. And the people Plenty, of mate. Ex exactly. <laughs> Plenty of mistakes. So the people that are listening to this, and I really hope the listeners are, are taking full advantage of this, embrace these stories and don't make the mistakes that both I and, and Dev have made. You cut the learning curve in half by just making sure that you start charging in the terms of packages as opposed to what you learned from your lawyer, your accountant, friend that one day you'd hopefully aspire to be, the per hour psychology. Yeah, this segues really nicely into the second point, which is about pricing. Um, the number one, number one thing that you can do as a coach that I found in, um, in, my, in my experience, but especially my recent experience, including with myself, that is going to help your business is figuring out how much you need to be making Per month. Now, it sounds like the most simple and obvious thing. And some of you may be saying that, well, yes, yes, we do budgets and, and I have this and that. But if, if I had a penny for every coaching client that uh, every client that I've worked with who's a coach who says this, that they do do budgeting and they do do this and they do do that. And then I ask them, well, how do they come up with their pricing? And how much do they come up with? Like how much do they need to be making in a month? 
they'll say, well, we need to be making, I don't know, let's say $5,000 a month or $10,000 a month. Uh, let's say 10000 Roll with that. It's more, more typical. And then I say, well, how did you come up with that number? And their eyes glaze over and they have this look of, well, you know, it's my financial goal. It's, it's what I want to be, what I want to be making. And I say, okay, but, but why, how, how do you justify that? Where did you come up with this number? If it's a goal, it, it has to be attached to some sort of value system. It has to be attached to some sort of measure. What's, what's the issue here? Like what's going on? Why do you want $10,000 a month? They are absolutely flabbergasted. They have no idea where that number came from. And they've realized that that's basically just this um, glorified number that a lot of coaches that start out uh, kind of have this impression of because it you know, basically means that they'll get into a six-figure business. Um, and that's another buzzword that gets thrown around, six-figure business. And I can tell you so many people who talk about having a six-figure business that really don't take home six figures at all. Um, and, and, and a lot of people who don't talk about how much money they make, and then they make a lot more money than you would imagine. Um, the, the point is that you need to be really, really clear on how much money you actually need to make before you're clear on how much money you want to make, which will then more sensibly inform um, you know, how much money you should be charging, how many clients you should be working with. It, it's all a lot more uh, strategic than people you know, I- imagine it should be, which is just plucking out a number out of their ass, which, um, which funny enough, I've seen a lot of seminar leaders actually teach people to do. They say, how much should you be charging? doesn't matter. Just pluck it out of your ass and just charge, you know, charge $1,500 or charge $2,500 a month or charge $5,000 a month. Find your comfort zone, whatever scares you, charge around that price. I started off doing that as well. I thought it, I realized it's a ridiculous strategy. So here's what I do specifically, technically. And I think if I really hope that people listening to this will actually take this on and do it. It's very simple. Open up Excel, open up a spreadsheet or whatever you use for, uh, for spreadsheets, and make a column. List every single item that you can think of, well, item category that you can think of that you would spend um, in a month. So I'll, I'll, and, and that's one column. And obviously the next column would be um, how much you're actually spending in a month on that. So I'll, um, uh, what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll tell you the items that I have on my list because I found that when people do this, their clarity and their relationship around money improves so much, um, and they start making more money as a result as well. So, the kind of stuff that I have on my uh, on my column list, I have two categories: I have personal and business. So, in my personal, I have public transport, groceries, eating out, mobile phone, petrol, car maintenance. Um, I even put things like massages, uh, gym membership, uh, supplements, uh, gifts, and then I have a miscellaneous cost um, for anything else as well. Uh, then in my business category, I have all my subscription services that I need to run my business. I have uh, uh, my office expenses, uh, you know, phone number, bank fees, uh, accounting um, software fees, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I then have a separate category for accommodation. You may just put this into your personal expenses. It just depends how you want to do it, where I put in, you know, rental mortgage and utilities. Um, and then I have a travel category where I put in flights and accommodation based on how much I want to be saving or spending uh, each month based on um, – how much I might be traveling over a period of 12 months. Uh, then I also have um, a savings percentage, how much percentage of my income I want to be saving. And then I consider, uh, you know, tax, the super help, which is uh, for your American listeners, basically university uh, debt, uh, educational debt that you uh, accumulate over here. And, and you, you basically come up with a figure. So I have a figure about how much I want to be making for my ideal lifestyle to the cent. And, and I look at my uh, budgeting every day because it helps me set goals because of those goals, I can backward engineer, look at my packages and actually figure out my pricing. I totally understand that a lot of coaches listening to this, it will scare the crap out of you. It will, because a lot of people in the coaching space, even if you're a business coach, even financial coaches that I've worked with, they struggle with this stuff because it scares them to look at the reality. And it's very confrontational for them to look at the reality of what they need to be making, as opposed to saying, well, wouldn't it be nice if I was making $100,000 a year? It, it's it's actually more important than that as well, Dev, because a lot of people don't realize that you have to spend a few hours, a lot of hours, finding clients. You've got to spend time preparing for those clients, invoicing those clients. So you can't just say, okay, I need to get Alec 
this much per hour because I'd be happy to earn, you know, 100, 200, 300 dollars an hour. For me, mm. sometimes a client, I can take a whole morning to prepare for them because I know what we've got on. So while, you know, I charge, well, I, I discussed in the last session for a, a two hour by two, by three intake where I talk about differentiation, niche marketing and sales systemization, I charge three and a half thousand. But then sometimes I have to work on a project for an entire morning. And that means I can't keep my charge out rate at that level because the, it becomes more in depth. And as you said, that's why you charge sort of two and a half to five, because as things are more in depth and require more thought work, outside the hours that you're spending with the physical client, things have to change. And so many people don't factor this in. They're saying, oh, if I can get $100 an hour, I'll be happy. They don't take into account all of the additional hours for finding those clients, for billing those clients, and for working on those clients' work because they're going to expect you to come prepared, not come and say, which I, I've seen Kate coaches do and it horrifies me. So what would you like to work on today, Mr. Customer? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, it, I think that's a fair question once you've built up some evidence that you can actually get meaningful and measurable results as well. Um, I, I do think a lot of people go out there and call themselves coaches because they think that that word has somehow got some inherent value to it. They don't understand the difference between being a coach and a consultant. What's even worse is that a lot of clients out there, a lot of customers out there who will engage a coach don't necessarily realize that sometimes they what they're actually looking for is a consultant. Um, and sometimes what they're actually looking for is a business manager or a CEO because they want to build this you know, fancy business, um, particularly, obviously, we're talking about uh, business coaches in this case, but they want to build a fancy business. They just don't want any other responsibility of being an actual business manager or an entrepreneur. So they just want to do service delivery, which is fine. But if you're not aware of that, it can cause all sorts of complications in the relationship. I really always, when this conversation comes up, feel a moral obligation to inform people and advise people very, very carefully that if you are a coach or you're calling yourself a coach, make sure that you understand the difference between coaching and consulting and make sure that you're willing to show up as a coach when you need to show up as a coach and you're willing to show up as a consultant when you need to show up as a consultant and make sure that the vision of that relationship that you have with your customer and client uh, is very, very clear. It's it's very clear the value that you're bringing to the table, not in terms of the value proposition you write in a sales letter, but specifically to each and in, each individual client that you're working with, you know what's going to happen as a result at the bare minimum of you working with them for three months. And just opening themselves up to, you know, engaging with the universe in a more uh, fanciful way so that money starts being attracted into their life, um, sometimes that's fine. Sometimes that, that is actually what, um, what the client needs. They just need a, uh, a counselor in the guise of a business coach. But that's very, very rare. What people really need is the results that you're going to bring to them. And if you're not clear about your own relationship with how much you should be pricing, how you want to be packaging as a, uh, as, as a, as a byproduct of that or as a, um, a follow-on from that, and, and what value you're bringing to the table um, in the context of that pricing and packaging uh, conversation, that lack of clarity is going to do a disservice to the clients and customers that you're going to work with as well. Oh, look, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, it's funny, we haven't discussed this, but I've actually got some session planned about talking about meaningful and measurable results and starting with why to help people understand why they need to price in certain ways to achieve certain goals and working out what your goals are before they start working on what they're going to charge because sometimes their charge out rate is inconsistent with what they want to achieve in their life. So I'm, I'm really glad that you, you brought those up. But on the flip side, I know that there's going to be a lot of people listening that have identified with some of the things that you've said. And I'm a big believer in identifying with a specific role model and a person and then following that person. So if somebody has identified with this message, which I'm sure they have, Dev, how can we get in contact with you? Yeah, look, I'm a, I'm a very, very open guy. I believe in, um, in in really sustainable relationships. The reason I got into business was to make cooler friends, um, and it's not a <laughs> it's not a fancy catchword. I uh, I came up with just to share on stages that I speak on uh, around the world. It's just something that I really, really believe in. I um, I was in medical school before I um, got into business coaching, and I dropped out because of various life circumstances. Had a bit of a near death experience, and my journey took me elsewhere. And when I got into business, I realized that um, a part of the, a part of what drew me to business was the people that I got to connect with um, all around the world, uh, people like yourself, Matthew. So firstly, thank you for having me on the show. It's a, it's a real honor. 
if anybody wants to connect with me, uh, there's a few different things that they can do. Uh, my company, as I mentioned earlier in the conversation, Sketchpad Ideas, is at sketchpadideas.com. Uh, you can learn a bit about me there. You can learn a lot about what we do. Um, and if you happen to be in, in Sydney or in Western Sydney in the area, you can pop by my office and meet me or give us a call. Um, if you want to learn more about me specifically, it's uh, devsing.net, uh, where I share a lot of my uh, a lot of my thoughts that are a little bit off tangent sometimes from business. Um, and my podcast show, as you mentioned, the Life Optimized Show, is at thelifeoptimizedshow.com. dot com. Um, hopefully, season two will kick off by the time this episode releases. But if it doesn't, then you know we still have twenty two episodes um, of really, really inspiring, excellent conversations to the point where I'll even often go back and listen to them myself, so people can reach that way. If anyone has any questions specifically in regards to anything that we've talked about on this show, uh, please, please, please do email me. Uh, just send me an email. I'm more than happy to answer questions and emails. I'm not a hotshot celebrity where I'm so inundated that I need someone else at the moment to address my emails. Uh, you can reach me at dev at, uh, that's D-E-V, at devsing.net, D-E-V-S-I-N-G-H uh, dot net. And just ask me any questions. Um, I'm a massive believer in this one thing that I first learned from Tony Robbins, which is that the quality of answers that you get in life is directly proportional to the quality of questions that you ask. So whenever someone puts an offer for me there to ask them any questions, I completely pick their brains. um, And I welcome everyone to do the same with me. Fantastic, Dev. And look, please take Dev up on that opportunity because very seldomly do you get somebody offering that level of assistance. So feel free to send him an email. And that website, again, was devsing.net. But, Dev, it's been great to have a fellow Aussie on the call, and uh, I really appreciate you being here. <laughs> Thank you again, Matthew. I uh, hope I didn't make you too homesick with, uh, with <laughs> my bit of Aussie accent. Um, and, yeah, hopefully, well, see you, hopefully see you in Australia soon. Yeah, I'll be down there, as I said, in, uh, in April. So I'm very much looking forward to it. And, look, Everybody that's listening, whether you're in Australia, the US, the UK, or all of the other locations that are loving this podcast and posting reviews, I really appreciate you tuning in and the the commitment Dev has to giving value in every one of the sessions that he does. I know that's what a lot of people that he's interviewed with before have shared with me. So please, if you are enjoying this content, take a second to subscribe to this podcast to make sure that you don't miss out on any other of these unbelievable podcasts. And If you have 30 seconds, and it really does only take 30 seconds, I would really appreciate it if you hopped on iTunes, typed in Better Business Coach Podcast, and posted a review with the star rating that you feel that this podcast is worthy. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next session. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Better Business Coach Podcast. Head over to matthewpollard.guru for links, recaps, and any downloadable templates mentioned in this and every show. Also, if you've not already rated our new podcast in iTunes, we'd love your support. Simply leave a review and the star rating you think worthy. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thank you in advance and see you next time.